This is from the Telegraph, and it was the 25th of January 2010 by James Dellingpole. It says, after Climate Gate, you got Pachuria Gate, Mayor Pachuri and his own private company, raking in millions of bucks, and Glacier Gate, the, the dream that somebody made up that they all ran with, as though it was fact, then Amazon Gate. So it says, the anthropomorphic uh, global warming theory is toast. Man-made global warming's toast. So is Dr. Rajendra Pachuri. So is the Stern Review. So is the credibility of the IPCC. But if you think I'm cheered by this, you're very much mistaken. I'm trying to write a climate gate book, but the way things are going, by the time I'm finished, there won't be anything left to say. The battle will already have been won, and the only people left who still believe in man-made global warming will be the eco-loon equivalents of those wartime Japanese soldiers left abandoned and forgotten on remote Pacific atolls. Here's the latest development, courtesy of Dr. Richard North, and it's a cracker. It seems that not content with having lied to us about the shrinking glaciers, increasing hurricanes, rising sea levels, the IPCC's latest assessment report also told us a complete load of porkies about the danger posed by climate change to the Amazon rainforest. This is to be found in Chapter 13 of the Working Group 2 report, the same part of the IPCC fourth assessment report in which the Glacier Gate claims are made. There is the startling claim, and then it gives you it here what the claim was. Then it shows you how you look through it and see what's actually there. It says, uh, it gets even better, the two expert authors of the World Wildlife Fund report, so casually cited by the IPCC as part of the, of the <clears throat> robust peer-reviewed process. Do you realize that this peer-reviewed process is other special interest groups that aren't scientists at all? I mean, I mean Prince Philip is at the head, I think, of the, the WWF. And the only thing that he's a specialist on is sniffing wines and telling them what they are. It says here, so, so there weren't even uh, Amazon specialists. One Dr. P.F. Moore is a, politi- a policy analyst. He says, my background and experience around the world has required and developed higher level policy and analytical skills. This is one of the guys that came out with the Amazon as dying stuff. I have a strong understanding of government administration, legislative review, analysis and inquiries generating through involvement in or management of the Australian Regional Forest Agreement process. An agreement process, a lawyer, right? Parliamentary and government inquiries, coronial inquiries and public submissions on water pricing, access and use rights and native vegetation legislation in Australia and fire and natural resource laws. This is the specialist that they can come out and tell you about glaciers melting and, and the Amazons disappearing. He's a lawyer. Then he gives you another one too, another green, green activist for the Guardian newspaper that's all for this, by the way, Andy Rowell. It says, Andy Rowell is a freelance writer and investigative journalist with over 12 years' experience on environmental, food health and globalization issues. Rowell has undertaken cutting-edge investigations for, amongst others, action on smoking and health. <laughs> He's one of these, these guys who go around dampening the spirits of everybody else, you know. The Campaign of Tobacco-Free child, Children. Friends of the Earth, that's the group that wants to depopulate drastically. They really hate humanity. Greenpeace, another, oh, what can you say? The IFAW, the Pan-American Health Organization Project Underground, the World Health Organization, World in Action, and the World Wildlife Fund. These are all the peer-reviewed guys, the guys that peer-review all this stuff. The specialists, you know, not one of them's a scientist. They're all, got, they've all got political interests. They're all on board with the same agenda. It says, but the IPCC's shamelessness did not end there. Dr. North has searched the WWF's report High and low, we can find no evidence of a statement to support the IPCC's claim that 40% of the Amazon is threatened by climate change. It says here logging and farm expansion are a much more plausible threat. What's up with that provides a further worrying long list of the non-peer-reviewed papers from the World Wildlife Fund cited as evidence in the IPCC's fourth assessment report. Time, it asks, uh, for the IPCC to be stripped of its Nobel Peace Prize. I'd say. We can but dream, he says. 
update if you want cheering up. I highly ha- recommend this fascinating article about 12 more glaciers which haven't heard the news about global warming. And, and you can go into that site too and have a good chuckle. But uh, you realize how they're using fear and crisis and utter lies to ramrod the world into a new way of living that's already pre-planned, not a very pleasant way of living, um, with government agencies running our lives from birth to death, and they're all working together. All these different, what you think are different unassociated groups, are all working together on the same agenda, highly funded, highly, highly funded by the big foundations, and all in coordination with each other by organizational bureaucracies. Amazing, isn't it? Back with more after this break. Hi, folks. I'm Alan Watt. This is Cutting Through the Matrix, trying to make sense of all the the corruption and the planned corruption and the deceit and the lies that were fed every day on a massive scale. These aren't, you know, this is true organized crime when you understand it. There's nothing more organized on the planet than all of these thousands of groups funded by the foundations, which are simply uh, tax relief break outlets for the big international bankers and the richest people on the planet. They run the world. The, the politicians don't. The politicians take money from them, certainly. Uh, in fact, I could just call it bribes. If a corporation obviously gives you money to run for office, uh, you've got you to pay them back somehow. That's a bribe. That's obvious to me. Uh, and, and, of course, all the nonsense they say, well, you know, uh, it's with no strings attached, it's utter. That's for a different dimensional reality somewhere, but not this one. But you understand this thing about right wing and left wing is just a game that we go through. Uh, it's a dialectic process. True far right wing organization would end up in utter anarchy because it would be no government at all. The extreme of right wing would be no government. The idea of having right-wing at all was supposed to be as least government interference in anything as possible. That's how it used to be. That was the idea of it. Whereas the uh, the Fabiast and the Communists, which are all the same thing, really, um, all funded by the same bankers again, at once a world run by rules and regulations from, from top to bottom, just stacks and stacks of rules, laws, and regulations. If you've ever uh, read uh, the writings of Sidney Webb, who was the, the writer for the Fabians. He did all the minutes and so on. He worked out uh, all the different rules that should go through, the formulas that bureaucrats now use. Uh, you should read his books. Uh, it's, it's better than any sleeping medication. Uh, it, it, I guarantee you, you will fall asleep. You might have nightmares, but you will fall asleep. That's what uh, left wing's all about, a controlled society by the control freaks. And there's lots of them that join it. And uh, and nothing to do with helping the poor. You you don't help the poor by putting everybody in a straitjacket. And it's the same, too, with the so-called liberals in the U.S. It's the same darn thing, you know. 